My name is Lutz van Dijk. Um, my profession is that of a historian, a teacher, educator, and a writer. Um, the writing passion is what uh, determines my life. Half, the other half is that I work in a project in South Africa, Cape Town, since more than 15 years now, uh, where we try to create a home for children and uh, teenagers who have no other ca adult caregivers, no parents, no grandparents anymore due to HIV and AIDS. It's uh, located in a small township south of Cape Town, um, and this is very much what determines my life today. Well, there's one general rule that, of course, um, safe space, respect only works if you are a respectful teacher yourself. If you um, are sensitive to not only minorities, because that might be the, the issue or the, the, the uh, content of your project, but that there's a general uh, sphere, atmosphere in your class where, if, for example, if learners criticize you or are critical about something you have done, where you are easy and comfortable in dealing with challenges, where you are also easy in dealing with general um, problems of um, diffic so-called difficult learners. Um, I think that is the first um, crucial thing to be aware of. Um, you cannot in abstract, uh, when you are, let's say, not respected as a teacher in your classroom, start with an issue then um, which is sensitive and where, where learners, minorities or maj majorities, um, feel it's not honest what you are doing. It needs to be a safe space for everybody. And why I'm saying that is that um, my experience is that that also means and includes that those uh, young people who might be provocative in their responses to minorities, no matter which minority, should feel that they are respected in the way how they express themselves. Um, there are certainly limits um, as far as uh, general respect and human rights are concerned, but uh, my experience is in many hundreds of readings and workshops I did in schools in several countries that many times those who are not positive towards minorities in general, um, are surprised when they feel and when they see I also respect them in their attitude or in their opinion, which doesn't mean we end there. I give you a totally different example. Quite recently, I spoke about our children. Um, I told you about our family where we live together with 20 children and young people who are affected by HIV AIDS. And um, at the end of my speech, it wasn't the um, a learner who, who raised first hand, but the headmaster, the principal, who said, and I'm a diabetic, I also need to take medication every day, insulin, otherwise I would be dead. And nobody knew at the school, and it was a moment of silence, and then two other learners also raised their hands and talked about their own diseases, chronic diseases, where um, they needed the respect of others to, 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 to deal with their diseases. Um, and this is, I think, a good example where if you are able and if a safe space is created um, and you are able to disclose something personal, you will see that young people respond with almost all the time equal kindness and sometimes even equal openness. One more point about a method. Um, my experience with these hundreds and hundreds of encounters in classrooms is that it never can really go wrong. Even if a situation happens where you are challenged as a teacher, as a lecturer, as a reader um, in the audience, uh, then make use of it. Start where the young people indicate they are. Don't jump over it. So if they are saying, no, 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 I don't want to hear anything about gay issues, re respond to it. Don't say that's wrong, but respond by saying, um, why? Is there a reason? Maybe you had a bad experience. Or are there others in the, in the audience? Are there other young people who want to say something about that? So never, never, because you force the issue on them, never be offended if they maybe don't respond in the first round positive.